what resistant starches should you be consuming and what should you generally avoid? Okay, resistant starches, just to recap, they are sort of like something that allows you to have your cake and eat it too. Not quite literally, but in some contexts, kind of literally, because they are a starch that gives volume and gives texture and just like a regular starch, except it is resistant to digestion, resistant starch. So when it's resistant to digestion, it means that we're not necessarily extracting like glucose from it. We're not getting a whole lot of like metabolic effect from it, but we're getting a tremendous microbiome and GI effect from it. Resistant starches resist digestion, which means they bypass digestion and they go into the intestine and they feed bacteria. Bacteria then feed on the resistant starches that did not break down in your gut. Now they're breaking down in your intestine and your colon feeding bacteria. This is hugely beneficial because it is allowing what are called short chain fatty acids to be produced. When the bacteria in our gut have something to eat, they then produce things like butyrate. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's break this all down as to which ones you should rotate through, which ones you should avoid. You've probably heard of Long Jack or Tonkat Ali, right? There's like a huge rage going on about it right now because it appeared on a couple of really big channels and now all of a sudden people are super interested in it. Well, the stuff is fascinating. It's an adaptogen. Now today's video is sponsored by a company called VH Nutrition, which is an Amazon brand that really brings some high quality stuff, especially in the world of adaptogens. So when it comes down to Tonkat Ali or Long Jack, what's interesting about it is there are some pretty cool studies that demonstrate that it helps free testosterone from what's called sex hormone binding globulin. So sex hormone binding globulin is like a little car that testosterone drives around in, like a little like transport vehicle. And if too much testosterone is balled up inside of sex hormone binding globulin, that can affect testosterone levels. So there are a lot of studies that demonstrate this and it's really interesting when you start looking at the data. So anyhow, there is a special link down below because they are today's video sponsor. And that link will get you a buy one, get one free of their long jack. Okay, so this is an exclusive code. The code is T4NP3VD. It's also down below in the description. So that's a very exclusive code and that will get you a buy one, get one free long jack on Amazon. So click that link down below and use that code. If it's something that you're interested in, now is the time. So start doing some research and check them out down below. Now let's get to the science. So we want the bacteria to feed on these resistant starches and produce these short chain fatty acids but we don't want them to produce just any short chain fatty acids. You've probably heard me talk about something called butyrate producers. We want bacteria that produce butyrate. Butyrate is the most researched and butyrate is the most powerful short chain fatty acid. So if we're trying to get a benefit from resistant starch, we're trying to get butyrate. That's the main benefit. And what that butyrate is going to do is it's going to contribute to allowing us to utilize fuels better at a cellular level. It's going to allow us to increase what's called glucagon-like peptide 1, which is going to keep us satiated for longer periods of time. It's going to improve glucose tolerance. It's going to improve our cells' ability to utilize fatty acids, oxidizing more fat when we're working out. Okay, so the benefits of resistant starches are not just about being able to eat your cake. It's about what it actually does in terms of changing your butyrate levels. This is where the big issue comes into play. Okay, we look at the research and we see resistant starches increase short chain fatty acids and we call it a day. That's not how it works. Okay, now we're starting to uncover more research where we see, wow, resistant starches, depending on the type, can actually have negative effects on butyrate but positive effects on other short chain fatty acids that don't matter as much, acetate, propionate. So here's one very interesting research piece that really like brought this to light for me. Check this out. This was published in the journal Nutrition and Cancer, okay? And it took a look at different types of resistant starch. In this particular case, it used maize as a control, something that doesn't really ferment, okay? Then it looked at potato starch, which is actually a great resistant starch in my opinion. Okay, it's a little bit, you know, some people don't want to, anyway, it's decent, but people don't want the potatoes, so there's that discrepancy there. Then they looked at something called high amylase starch. Now, if you look at ingredient labels, you're going to see high amylase wheat, high amylase barley, even high amylase rice. Okay, so keep an eye out for that next time you're shopping, okay? Then they also took a look at something called alpha amylase treated high amylase starch, which you're not going to see quite as much, but they used it as an example. Here's what's wild. Okay, they compared all of these and they said, okay, we wanna see if we give rats a bunch of these different starches and resistant starches, like what's gonna to happen to their gut biome? So after four and a half weeks, they took a look at the rat's microbiome. What they found was very interesting. High amylase starch 
had the largest increase of short chain fatty acid levels. So if we were like looking five, six years ago, we would have looked at that and we would have said, wow, high amylase starch, high amylase wheat, high amylase barley is the best thing that we should consume in terms of helping out our gut microbiome and short chain fatty acids. But now we look at the levels and we see, oh, it actually had the lowest levels of butyrate. It actually could potentially even be decreasing butyrate. Why could that be happening? Well, because resistant starches don't all feed the same bacteria. Okay, so uh, hypothetically speaking, one kind of resistant starch could go in and feed bifidobacterium, which is not a butyrate producer, and then another starch could go in and feed ruminococcus, which is a huge, you know, it's a huge butyrate producer, right? So the point is we don't necessarily know what these resistant starches are feeding, and now we're learning that different species that get fed will have a different short chain fatty acid outcome. So if you look at different kinds of starches, one of the, some of the ones, and I'm gonna rate them in order that I think, in my personal opinion, you should really be consuming them. Okay, I am a huge fan of cassava as a resistant starch. Okay, cassava is a phenomenal resistant starch. Tapioca starch in smaller amounts. My concern with tapioca is it's much more, it's kind of a concentrated cassava. And I feel like there's so much tapioca in given foods that we eat now, that if we consume too much tapioca, we may even start developing allergies to it. We may start developing intolerances because it's in a lot of different foods. Cassava I like because it's a little bit more full spectrum and you're getting more of the actual like uh, resistant starches. You're getting the variety of like the starch that you want. Okay, potato starch is another one that I like. Arrowroot is another one. Those three are great, but I think the best resistant starch, if you're looking at adding it in in sort of a supplement form, is going to be green banana flour. Green banana flour is very concentrated in terms of resistant starch. You just wanna make sure that you're rotating them as much as you possibly can so that you're not getting the path of least resistance or the least common denominator. Like if you were to just eat high amylase starch, you could see what would happen based upon that research. So rotate through them. Another two that I would encourage you to rotate through now and then, just to add to your diet, is going to be if you're gonna have oatmeal, cook it and then let it cool, right? It's interesting. If you cook oatmeal and then let it cool, it becomes what's called a retrograded starch. And that retrograded starch is useful because when it cools, it becomes resistant. But it becomes resistant in a pretty mild fashion where you're still going to get kind of like the gut microbiome benefit but you're also getting other benefits too like beta glucans and all this other stuff okay the other one is cooled rice heated and then cooled rice with heated and cooled rice like sushi rice you're getting a similar benefit you just don't want to exceed about a quarter cup of that at a time anyhow mix all of these up avoid the high amylase starch when you can and i think you'll start to find that hey my gut feels a little bit better as always keep it locked in here on my channel i'll see you tomorrow